Distinguished participants, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. It is on behalf of UNESCAP, it is a real pleasure to welcome you all to the Southeast Asia Dialogue on Sustainable Finance, Innovative Finance for the 2030 Agenda. I would like to thank you all for joining this meeting online. Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, the agreement at the 2009 meeting UN meeting on climate change in Mexico, or COP16, included a commitment by developing countries to mobilize $100 billion per year by 2020 to help developing countries adapt and mitigate to climate change. The Paris Agreement extended the duration of this $100 billion commitment until 2025 and will decide on a higher level of financing before 2025. This commit commitment has great political significance. Developing countries consider it, consider it as essential to meet the commitments under the Paris Agreement on climate change. Tracking this commitment, however, has been challenging with many unresolved methodological issues of consistency, comparability, and transparency in reporting. The latest OECD assessment of November 2020 showed an increasing trend in climate finance from developed to developing countries, reaching close to 80 billion US dollars by, 20, uh, by 2018. However, in light of the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, it is highly unlikely that the $100 billion goal will have been reached in 2020. This shortfall, along with the lack of clear commitment at the recent summit of the G20 to provide additional financing, has led to frictions at the preparatory meeting of the COP26 that happened uh, last week. However, there are good news. Uh, this is a large emerging market for private investment in climate action that has been emerging for the last 10, 15 years. For example, the Global Market for Environment, Social and Governments Investment, or ESG, reached more than $30 trillion in assets under management in, 2010, in 2018. And Bloomberg projects that it can grow to $53 trillion US dollars by 2025, which represents a third of the global assets under management globally. Green bonds are another important component, an important component of ESG investment, and they have reached a record global issuance of close to 300 billion in 2020, according to the latest data by CBI. The cumulative green bond issuance as of now exceeds, exceeds is greater than 1.2 trillion US dollars. Green bonds has also been important in Southeast Asia. In 2020, the region achieved a record issuance of 12 billion US dollars, including also social and sustainability bonds. This represents a 5.2% year-on-year increase from 2019. Singapore is the leader of the region, accounting for 53%, with Thailand and Indonesia experiencing also significant growth. There are, however, gaps in national capacities to issue green and SDG-linked bonds. This dialogue aims to build the capacity of key stakeholders and assist policymakers by outlining key green and sustainable finance concepts and discuss case studies used to scale up public and private sustainable financing. This event is also an opportunity to exchange information, share experiences of sustainable finance, and identify and assess opportunities to address countries' needs within the region. I hope that all attendees will draw on today's dialogue to strengthen their green recovery efforts. 
ESCAP stands ready to continue its support uh, of its member states and look forward to strengthening our engagement in pursuing green and sustainable development in Southeast Asia and beyond. Let me let me conclude saying that uh, this uh, this technical meeting is actually um, a preliminary discussion. We are going to have national dialogues uh, in Cambodia and Indonesia coming up, and also we are going to have uh, the our annual SDG forum for Southeast Asia, where these topics will also be discussed. And finally, ESCAP will have in October uh, 2021. Uh, its biennial uh, session of the, the committee on macroeconomic policy, poverty reduction and financing for development. This is a very good opportunity for our member states to, to join us and discuss the issues that are important for them so that ESCAP can provide additional support. And I would like to invite all of you to attend the committee in October. Thank you very much for your attention. I would like now to ask you, everyone, if you can turn on the videos, uh, your videos, we are going to have a photo opportunity. Please turn on the videos. I should turn on mine, right? I'm not sure. <laughs> Hold on. I didn't realize it was uh, off. Ah. Okay, uh, technician, uh, please tell us when it's ready. OK, thank you. Thank you so much. Now um, we are going to have a video address by Mr. Nabit Hanif, the Director of Financing for Sustainable Development Office at the Department of Economic and Social Affairs of the United Nations. Uh, please, uh, please turn off your videos. We are going now to show a video of Navid Ali. I would like to commend ESCAP for organizing this timely dialogue and thank you for the opportunity to deliver the keynote address. Let me begin by placing this dialogue into the context of sustainable investment and the sustainable development goals, both globally and in the Southeast Asia region. Since the issuance of the first so-called green bonds some 15 years ago, Sustainable investment products have grown exponentially and are on the verge of breaking into the mainstream. PIMCO, for instance, the world's largest asset manager, now calls sustainability bonds an important part of the $130 trillion global bond market. This would have been considered unthinkable just a few years ago. And South Asia is also showing a positive trend. Issuance of green, social, and sustainability bonds in ASEAN, for instance, reached a record high of $12.1 billion in 2020, which is a 5% increase from 2019. This is excellent news, but to be very frank, it is far from enough. These 12.1 billion compared to a total market capitalization of ASEAN of several trillion US dollars is too small. I think, ladies and gentlemen, the dialogue should focus on two questions. First, how to fully unlock the potential of sustainable investment in Southeast Asia. Second, what role various stakeholders can play in accelerating sustainable financing for the SDGs. Let me add some of my perspectives and some concrete recommendations in answering these two questions. First, we need clarity on objectives and impact. 
as this investment space has grown, so has green washing of instruments that are green only in name. Moreover, we have to acknowledge that for the purpose of achieving the SDGs, green alone is not enough. We need investment instruments that advance all three dimensions of sustainable development, including the social dimension. To accelerate progress towards the 2030 agenda, we need to advance instruments linked to the SDGs as a whole. This requires capacity in design and application, which global and regional institutional partners such as ESCAP can provide. Secondly, there is a need for a clear understanding of what SDG bonds can and cannot deliver. It is critical for governments to map financing needs and establish how receipts from SDG bonds can contribute to the financing of the SDGs and the COVID-19 recovery. It is also vital for countries to further advance actions that can facilitate investment, including institutional strengthening and reforms of capital markets. This is critical for countries with less established markets, and they are keen to attract sustainable investment. Again, institutional partners can play a key role in supporting governments. Thirdly, there is a need to demystify SDG bonds. There is a wealth of re regional perspectives and best practices that can guide board issuance for countries that are yet to test the waters of sustainable bonds. While innovation plays a key role in this space, for many countries, advancing sustainable investment instruments is as much about implementation as innovation. There are proven concepts that can be applied and adapted to country and sector specific needs. Ladies and gentlemen, let me now turn to the specific actions and existing initiatives that I believe can transform this space and unlock its potential for South Asia, East Asia. At the global level, the UN has been rapidly advancing progress in the sustainable investment space through the Secretary General's Global Investors for Sustainable Development Alliance, in short, GISD Alliance. GISD has developed a unified definition of sustainable development investment, which is a game changer for the sustainable investment space. The definition provides clear guidance to markets and acts as an effective deterrent to greenwashing. GISD is also promoting regulatory changes for sustainable finance and has issued a joint call for action for COVID-19 bond issuance. The aim is to provide immediate access to funds for the COVID-19 response and better align bonds with the SDGs. At the regional and national levels, urgent action is needed to strengthen capacity. The focus should be on how to develop roadmaps and pipelines for SG investment and select appropriate instruments such as SDG bonds that can match countries' investment needs and priorities. In addition, countries require further support on how to use risk sharing mechanisms to leverage private investment and effectively be channeled towards sectors that advance the SDGs. Ladies and gentlemen, I would also like to invite you to think big on how we can attract sustainable investment. One concrete proposal would be to develop a pool of sub-regional funds, such as for the East Asian region, designed to attract and channel private investment in the SDGs at the regional level. Such a mechanism could leverage regional capacity while attracting global funds at scale. 
In closing, let me reiterate that as we navigate this rapidly growing space, innovation and implementation will go hand in hand. The UN as institutional partner stand ready to support both every step of the way. Thank you for your attention and I wish you a highly successful dialogue. Thank you very much. I think that uh, this will conclude our opening session. So I would like now to introduce uh, Ms. Zainab Ebeltaji, our moderator, who will um, explain the objectives of sec session one. Same uh, thank, thank you, Mr. Alberto, for introducing me, distant coach speakers, colleagues. Good afternoon, a warm welcome to all, and thank you for again for joining us in this event. I will be your moderator today to facilitate the discussion on understanding the progress and perspective of Green SDG Linked Bond in Southeast Asia. Today, our session will discuss the state of Green SDG Linked Bond in Southeast Asia economies and its potential as innovative finance instrument supporting the 2030 Agenda, the Paris Agreement, and the ASEAN Comprehensive Recovery Framework in the post-COVID-19 period. The session will also discuss ESCAP ongoing initiatives to facilitate member states in financing climate resilience and the green development pathways. It's my pleasure now to invite Commissioner Mr. Ifru Luis Amaton, Securities and Exchange Commission, Republic of the Philippines, to take the floor and deliver the special remarks. Mr. Amatong, the floor is yours, so. Thank you very much, uh, Zainab, for that kind introduction. And thank you to the UNESCO uh, for, uh, for uh, inviting me to, to share with you the state of play of green, sustainable, and SDG-linked bonds uh, here in Southeast Asia. Um, about five years ago, the ASEAN Capital Market Forum, made up of the capital market regulators of the 10 ASEAN member states, noticed two things. First, as pointed out already in our opening session, there has been and continues to be an increasing amount of funds devoted to thematic or responsible investment. At the time that ASEAN first uh, noticed this in 2016, our estimate was only 21 trillion US dollars committed to the UN principles of responsible investing. Today, our understanding is that commitment has now reached 103.4 trillion US dollars. At the same time, the ASEAN Capital Market Forum also noticed the rapidly growing trend towards the issuance of thematic bonds, green, social, and sustainability bonds as a way to finance green, social, and sustainable projects. This was of interest to the ACMF because our interest has always been funding Southeast Asia's need for growth and economic development. And we have noted for some time that Southeast Asia has a growing demand for infrastructure in order to continue to facilitate and maintain the desired pace of economic development, even before the pandemic, need for, for rapid growth even before the, the pandemic even more necessary now as part of a post-pandemic recovery. Most, if not all of this infrastructure could and should be green infrastructure, infrastructure adapted to or mitigating the impact of climate change. Given the twin challenges of economic development and climate change, the ASEAN Capital Market Regulators through the ASEAN Capital Market Forum or ACMF work together to develop an enabling in, in environment for sustainable investment and responsible businesses. Working with multilateral and bilateral partners, as well as organizations such as the International Capital, Capital Market Association, or ICMA, and the Climate Bonds Initiative, we introduced the ASEAN Green Social and Sustainability Bond Standards in 2017 and 2018. These standards were intended to provide ASEAN companies and issuers with clear guidance for accessing the deep pools of responsible and sustainable capital available for investment, as well as providing assurances 
to these green and sustainable investors that bonds carrying the ASEAN label adhere to international best practices. The ASEAN standards were based on and aligned to ICMA's green social and sustainability bond principles, with what, but with some stricter requirements, such as expressly prohibiting fossil fuel power as a green use of proceeds, therefore avoiding the greenwashing that we are so concerned about, as well as requiring the disclosure of the qualifications of any second party opinion provider, if availed of. In the almost four years since the introduction of the ASEAN Green, uh, uh, Green Social and, and Sustainability Bond Standards in 2017 and 2018, more than 12 billion US dollars in ASEAN labeled Green Social and Sustainability Bonds have been issued across four countries and seven industries, including the public sector. This amount does not yet include the now 3.9 billion US dollars worth of sovereign green sukuk issued by the Republic of Indonesia, which are aligned with the same standards, even though they do not formally carry the same label. All told, at least 16 billion US dollars in green social and sustainability bonds have been issued by Southeast Asian countries. Our own experience in the Philippines is that more than 4.2 billion US dollars of these thematic bonds have been issued by both private sector companies and state-owned enterprises across multiple industries, including renewable energy, banking, real estate, and water, as well as in local currency, in our case, the Philippine peso, as well as in US dollars and even Swiss francs and euros. Although it is still early days, the initial feedback from markets seem to indicate four benefits for issuers of green social or sustainability bonds. Issuers have reported to us a diversification in their investor pool. They appear to have successfully attracted new investors that previously were not investing in their companies. In some instances, but not all, Issuers have reported that the coupon rates on these thematic bonds have been lower than otherwise plain vanilla bonds. At the same time, and this is very interesting, uh, green social and sustainability bonds appear to hold value better during a crisis. And on the right hand side of this slide, you can see the observations of international fund managers like BlackRock uh, and rating agencies like Morningstar on the resiliency of these green social and sustainability bonds even during the pandemic. Investors appear to take the issuance of these bonds as a signal of stronger governance by issuers and therefore provide lower risk and better long-term returns. And so possibly these kinds of thematic bonds might even be used to help build uh, uh, otherwise developing capital markets. Encouraged by this early success, and in order to scale up and allow more companies and issuers across all 10 ASEAN countries to benefit from sustainable finance, the ASEAN Capital Market Forum, with the support of the ASEAN finance ministers, has embarked on an ambitious roadmap for ASEAN sustainable capital markets. Most recently, ASEAN, through the ACMF, as well as the Working Committee on Capital Market Development, the Senior Level Committee on ASEAN Financial Integration and the ASEAN Insurance Regulators Meeting has embarked on an initiative to develop the ASEAN Sustainable Finance Taxonomy following a multi-tiered, encompassing principles, metrics, and thresholds and phased approach and with the following underlying five principles. The ASEAN Taxonomy is uh, expected to be the overarching guide for all ASEAN member states and in order to provide them with a common language and complementing their respective national sustainability initiatives. This taxonomy is also intended to take into consideration widely used existing taxonomies and other relevant taxonomies as appropriate and, in, and also contextualize and facilitate the orderly transition towards a sustainable ASEAN. The ASEAN taxonomy is also intended to be inclusive and beneficial to all 
ASEAN member states, and finally intended to provide a credible framework solutions where appropriate, and where appropriate, be science-based. Lastly, the ASEAN taxonomy is intended to be aligned with the sustainability initiatives taken by the capital markets, the banking sector, and the insurance sector. Our hope is that this ASEAN taxonomy, by providing guidance and a common language for what is green, social, and sustainable uh, activities that are consistent with the nationally determined contributions of each member state, and a just transition towards a low carbon future will allow investors and businesses to make the right choices for a truly sustainable future for all. Thank you very much for allowing me to share with you the recent developments in the ASEAN capital markets journey towards stability and uh, sustainability. Thank you and uh, good afternoon to all. Thank you, Commissioner Mr. Amadonko, for the special remark and explaining ASEAN principle for ASEAN sustainable finance. Uh, I would like to introduce Mr. Zanatan Hussainuddin, Associate Economic Affairs Officer at SCAP, who will deliver his presentation about the Green SDG linked bond in Southeast of Asia. Mr. Zanatan, the floor is yours. first okay uh, good good afternoon everyone so I'm um, now I'm uh, following up from uh, Commissioner Amatong I will just give some uh, idea on the state of play on green SDG link bond and also new initiative that uh, we are working on so to, to to begin my presentation I think it's 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 good if we're going back a bit uh, since now we're uh, actually want to achieve the SDG sustainable development goals we see in our report this year that only uh, SDG 9 on industry innovation and infrastructure actually already in the target, but others is uh, really lagging behind. We have some good uh, progress in, in SDG, SDG 4 and 6 and 1, but then if you see a bit lower, uh, especially on related to, to climate or on SDG goal 13 on climate action and also goal 14 on life below water, there's actually regressing. So there's a lot, uh, a lot of things need to be done. And of course, one element is also financing. This issue, or I, I think it's, uh, and I, I've, everyone I think agree that uh, the COVID era is kind of like make the situation even more uh, critical. We see, if you see the fiscal balance, uh, it deteriorating across the Pacific, across Asia and, and the Pacific. We see a deep, uh, deep negative uh, fiscal balance and normally it's waving around uh, zero to minus 2%, but then during the COVID 2019, 2000, uh, sorry, 2020, it, it dipped down uh, near to 8% uh, in, in average in Asia Pacific. So I think it's kind of like a spread. Uh, similarly, of course, a different country has a different uh, deepness, but uh, in, in, in general, it's, it's quite uh, all over the place. So in, 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 in the same spirit, uh, when the fiscal balance are uh, negative, the government also need to increase their spend, uh, their debt to, to, to kind of like balance those things. So it is it is kind of like, in, in, in also that's also what happened in Southeast Asia. We see uh, most countries have uh, deteriorating uh, government gross debt uh, uh, quite in increasing in the, in the last uh, one year compared to like one decade ago. So there's a kind of like need then to kind of like uh, working on this and we need to invest uh, again on, on SDG, but we also need to have kind of like a, a, a idea or, or kind of like a effort on how this kind of fiscal balance, how difficult situation with the COVID, while also ensuring that we still have some uh, investment to SDG. Having this kind of background, it's also uh, there's a kind of like new area as uh, in the opening session mentioned, and also uh, Commissioner Amatom mentioned, 
that we can bring a, a new uh, type of fund coming from capital market, from, in, from private sector. So it's not only the burden of the public. So in, in, this, in this area, uh, green and SDG link bond is actually quite uh, interesting. It's, quite, it's, it, it's innovative. I mean, uh, it started in 2008, uh, issued by World Bank, but then uh, we see for the last three, four, uh, five years, perhaps, after the Paris Agreement 2015, it's it's leaping uh, the the bond issue and, and in in number and volume is increasing so and with that it's also bring uh, participation from uh, all across the investor side uh, from the public and also for the from the private sectors so looking on what's the most uh, i think well known uh, in the in the in the in the in the in the definition of bonds we mention it. I think people call it a team bond. Well, we're going into a normally mentioned green, social, and sustainable. But there's also another like uh, type of this team bond. We can say uh, gender bond, catastrophic bond, or pandemic bond. It's really depend on uh, the use of proceed. In the most strict one, uh, if we can say SDG bond, it means that the bond will the issuer will finance uh, one or two or specific uh, SDG goals, it needs to be linked that way. So in, in that sense, uh, in, the, in the general or like a very loose uh, definition, this team bond actually can serve uh, as a kind of like SDG link bond because it, it's, it supports the achievement of the SDG itself. Now, if we look again uh, on the East ones in the, in, in the Asia and the Pacific and look again Compare it with uh, Southeast Asia, it's still uh, have a lot of room to improve. We see from 2015 and 2020, I think most uh, green bond is one in this uh, in this region is coming from East and Northeast Asia. So country like Korea, Japan, and China is really leading on on this one, on this on these green bond issuance. While uh, Southeast Asia is kind of like increasing, but still in the like uh, slow pace because it's only led by one or two countries, or while the others still kind of like lagging behind. And if we compare it to global bond, uh, it's even far. It's I think the size of our bond issuance is still peanuts. So there's a lot of room. There's a lot of opportunity to also uh, tapping into this global bond market. Well, in, in Southeast Asia, I think uh, Commissioner Amatong already mentioned a nice uh, graph and, 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 and volume, but we see uh, kind of like increasing on, on this uh, team bond issuance in, in Southeast Asia. Uh, particularly if we add a pandemic bond, then uh, it also will add a lot uh, on, the, on the volume of bond issuance. However, as uh, I mentioned before, earlier, uh, it's quite restricted in, in several countries in Southeast Asia. We see Indonesia, Thailand, Philippines, Singapore, and Malaysia quite uh, advanced in, in, in this area. Uh, they issue the bond and then can regularly issue the green bond or, or, or the, the other type of the bonds. So it's quite an advantage if once uh, they have a structure or infrastructure to issue this bond, the, the following issuance will be very much uh, easier. So looking on, on this part, uh, we, 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 see, we, we think that the, their, the capacity is uneven across the countries in Southeast Asia. So in, in one side, we have uh, emerging economies like Indonesia, Singapore, Thailand, and Philippines are really advancing. They're taking advantage of the uh, a nice framework harmonization, uh, as mentioned by Commissioner Amatong, with the issuance of the ASEAN Green Bond Standard, uh, Social Bond Standard, and also the roadmap. So it 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 gives some line or, or kind of like a guidance to issue this kind of bond. And but what's next is really on how to explore a new type of this team bond. And there's a discussion, for example, in Indonesia how to kind of like expanding a new type of the team bond, for example, blue bond or going to SDG bond, or also to kind of like uh, giving a, a more uh, 
looking for expanding investors so they can have some uh, room to kind of like uh, uh, new with new initiative and new type of the bond. So we will discuss this a bit more on uh, Thursday. On on the other hand, if we look on frontier economies, there's a there's a need, there's a deep need on uh, to strengthen regional cooperation to support the least developed countries in in order to have capacity to issue this kind of uh, type of bond. So we need to a bit uh, take a step back on 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 looking again on on this uh, kind of market and looking working more on the the feasibility itself. How can this country uh, issue uh, SDG green or SDG link bond? Uh, a good case, I think, probably in, in Cambodia, uh, they still they are now working on uh, local bond, a sovereign bond, but then it's also look exploring how they can issue uh, the, the this type uh, team bond. I think we can hear more uh, with the other discussion on on this part. The, the reason why uh, we should emphasize on the, on the first step of the feasibility, I think this is the most challenging one because uh, for the step of issuing uh, team bond or SDG link bond, the feasibility is really looking on what's the project or, or use of the proceed that could be financed by this bond issuance. And, and furthermore, looking more on what's the interest rate, what's the tenor and et cetera, so this is the most important part, and uh, and but laying some foundation on the bond issuance. So for countries in frontier market, this is I think the most urgent part that we need to do. Just uh, give you some idea. Uh, when I'm saying like SDG link bond, uh, we at 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 SCAP or UN, we we kind of like looking on how the uh, Already, a pre, uh, already available principle like uh, ICMA or even the ASEAN can link uh, the 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 use of proceed to SDG. So that kind of mapping is also important to also saying that uh, the bond issue and is also support the SDG. So one idea, uh, I mean, working with uh, development partner uh, in the region is really looking about the local bond. Okay, so we see here in, in the graph that uh, in uh, most countries in, in Southeast Asia, again, the, the emerging one, has a share amount, of, a good fair amount of uh, bond issuance and it goes to a local bond. So it's really helpful in tapping into domestic resource because uh, we don't really uh, Kind of like exposed by uh, uh, foreign shock, like currency shock or or whatever. So it's a, a bit it's more re reliable, and the, actually the opportunity is also big. So we're also looking, for example, uh, the example of a royal government of Bhutan, uh, with successfully issuing its first sovereign bond uh, in in lo local market in September 2020. As you know, Bhutan is very small, but then it's really successful on issuing this uh, type of bond. Uh, even like they have three times subscription when they offer this type of bond. So this kind of like uh, bond issuance is the kind of like low hanging fruit that could be uh, catched by the uh, LDC country in Southeast Asia to, to, to leapfrog their underdeveloped capital market and also uh, Taking learn lesson learned from uh, the, the 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 other countries that more advanced. We also uh, looking uh, from our survey, uh, the recent survey, we 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 see some kind of like exciting or unique uh, arrangement with uh, offshore public bonds. We see in uh, Thailand, the Laos People Democratic Republic. Uh, they they issued the bond in, in Thailand and uh, it's quite a uh, very good accepted. So at I think from 2000 for the last five six year, sorry for 2013 to for 2020, it's already like 43 Thai bad dominated bond from the low government and the outstanding now reach 2.1 billion. 
there are also like other modalities for we can explore. For example, diaspora bond. So we can mobilizing saving of countries uh, on immigrants. So this is kind of like a new territory that uh, we could explore. Another concept is uh, what if we used to join uh, a green or SDG link bond? Taking example in Southeast Asia, uh, there's a lot of uh, infrastructure project, for example, uh, transportation. There's uh, one uh, project in Cambodia, Philippines and Thailand. We can kind of like link that and, and ask uh, multilateral development bank uh, like IDB or IAB to kind of help issuing the bond on behalf of this uh, project to finance this, uh, this kind of project. So uh, this kind of like exciting an idea that we can explore, not just uh, issuing a single currency bond or a single uh, bond issuance in the country, but also having a regional cooperation. But all in all, uh, it's still ne needed that we need to have a share experience, changing uh, changing experience. And uh, I think uh, ASEAN, or particularly SEMF, is really leading on this one. And it's really different from uh, other part of sub-region. Well, they're not really coordinated, but in Southeast Asia, the opportunity and the leadership is, is clear. So I thank you, uh, and over to you, Zainab. Thank you, Mr. Hussainuddin, for providing us an update for a status on green SDG linked bond in southeast of Asia and highlights the stage before issuing SDG bond. Let's continue our conversations and hear from our distinguished panelists. I would kindly request that interventions be limited to a maximum of 10 minutes each. Following the interventions from the panelists, the floor will be open for questions from the participant. So the participant will be requested to write their questions in the, the chat box. Let me start with His Excellency Mr. Daju Nimdurji, Secretary, Ministry of Finance, Bhutan, to deliver his intervention on Bhutan experience with STG Linked Bond. Mr. Durji, you have, please take the floor. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Uh, thank, Dorji. Yes, thank you your for voice is so clear. thank you for inviting me to participate in, participate in the South Asia Policy Dialogue on Sustainable Financing. In my intervention, I will briefly provide uh, the innovative and sustainable financing mechanism adopted for meeting the increasing financing need to respond to the pandemic and uh, achieve the SDGs. I will also share some insights on Bhutan's initiative towards issuance of green bonds. As all the panelists are aware of, the pandemic continues to pose serious risks to health and livelihood of our people. So containment measures and lockdowns have adversely affected everyday life in Bhutan and uh, uh, caused economic hardship accordingly. We adopted uh, three prong uh, uh, approaches uh, in terms of financing the pandemic and uh, financing the response to the pandemic. Firstly, a national resilience fund has been established based on the command of His Majesty the King. The NRF has been used to grant uh, income support to individuals affected by the pandemic and then interest payment support to individuals and business starting from uh, April 2020, and it is still continuing. So the National Resilience Fund has become one of the most innovative financing mechanisms to respond to the pandemic on a sustainable basis. Secondly, uh, government has uh, allocated high-level capital spending, which means government has to run a high level of fiscal deficit to support uh, a resilient recovery. And for that, uh, innovative financing mechanism has to be established. These two initiatives have been supported by fiscal and monetary measures, uh, as in most of the countries. In terms of uh, supporting uh, the uh, recovery with the with the uh, pandemic uh, hitting uh, uh, the economy very badly, uh, the economy has experienced uh, largest contraction, uh, growth plummeting as low as negative uh, six point three. 
as the output from tourism related and construction manufacturing were deteriorated uh, with however with the successful vaccination program uh, which has created this hard community uh, and with higher capital investment and consumption economic activities are expected to pick up and for the uh, 2021 the outlook is very positive you know, we are trying to see a growth of 4.2 percent and uh, and main uh, theme uh, that we are supporting is sustained economic stability for a resilient recovery however resilient recovery needs uh, uh, substantial level of financing uh, on a sustainable uh, basis uh, to ensure sustained economic uh, stability and uh, growth. In terms of ensuring economic stability and supporting resilient growth, the challenge lies in closing the output gap, again uh, bringing GDP growth to its potential levels and generating adequate levels of jobs and unemployment in terms of uh, unemployment returns to its natural level. In order to meet increasing financing requirements, the option to explore various potential financing windows becomes the need of the hour, which is basically trying to look into all uh, innovative financing mechanisms besides the traditional one. Traditionally, uh, in Bhutan, the government's financing needs uh, were to be met through external borrowing, concessional borrowings, and mainly from uh, multilateral development banks, and the residual financing were met uh, through ways and means and then overdraft facilities. With the technical support received from UN SCAP and other agencies like ADB and World Bank, the uh, Royal Government of Bhutan issued its first long-term bond in September, as was highlighted by one of the speakers, to finance the fiscal deficit and support a resident recovery. The response uh, was overwhelming, as the offer was oversubscribed by more than three times. More than 56% uh, of the um, of the total. Uh, Investors, I think, uh, you know, individuals participated, financial institutions participated, NGOs participated. So therefore, it has given us this very uh, important experience that there is a huge potential locally to raise funds to support uh, uh, recovery uh, and to respond to the pandemic on a sustainable basis, besides ensuring that sustainable development initiatives are on, intact. The bond proceed for the first was used for supporting a resilient recovery to respond to the pandemic. So therefore, this was very unique for us. Uh, during a pandemic, uh, government of Bhutan issued the first bond and uh, the response was overwhelming, uh, mainly on two things. Firstly, I think there was, uh, uh, this was for the first time such an instrument was being issued. Secondly, uh, participants were quite excited, uh, despite being in the pandemic, uh, they were excited to be part of a very important initiative that the government was supporting our resilient recovery of, uh, during the pandemic. And based on experiences and the successful issues of the first bone, the second bone was issued and uh, was more uh, complicated in terms of yield method and all those um, uh, technicalities were completed. And again, surprisingly, the bond was subscribed, oversubscribed. The bid to uh, cover ratio was uh, over 4%, which means the bond was subscribed four times than the capital uh, required to support the uh, resilient recovery. And uh, this time, the bond proceed was used for supporting small and quarter industries, uh, mainly affected again by the pandemic. Uh, these were channeled through a uh, uh, small and cottage industry bank to support uh, individuals who were promoting uh, small and cottage industries and who were also impacted by the pandemic. So in order to support this resilient recovery and meet increasing uh, government's development financing needs, it's imperative that government increase and diversify its financing needs. As a result, Minister of Finance has been working towards developing a robust uh, domestic bond market in the country. This is also from the experiences that there's huge potential within the country that needs to be tapped to support uh, SDGs and then to ensure that these bonds are in keeping with the uh, ESG principles. And in addition to the traditional issues of government bonds, Mr. Uh, Bhutan has worked very closely with the uh, UNSCAP to develop the issuance of uh, green bonds. Despite the Uncertainty created by the pandemic, green bond issuance uh, presently, uh, as reported by the previous speaker, is on upward trend, touching the milestone of uh, US dollar one trillion in the green debt market capital by end of 2020. Of the total 
green bond issuance in 2020, 40% appears to be from the emerging market. And this is a, another opportunity for the emerging markets to explore and tap uh, all these potentials. So uh, the advantage of green bond is that it boosts the efficient use of resources by uh, moving to a clean circular economy besides uh, restoring biodiversity and reduction of pollution and other uh, environmental related issues are being incorporated. So in this context, uh, Bhutan as uh, global known is committed to remain carbon neutral, presently is carbon negative. Uh, uh, however, Bhutan remains again highly vulnerable to climate change, which means Bhutan needs to take uh, various adaptation and mitigation measures. Such measures will require additional financing and green bond hold potential for such financing. So Bhutan with this successful environmental track record can leverage its image to raise this affordable financing through this issuance of green bond or SDG linked bonds in the domestic market and international market. Uh, Minister of Finance has been working very closely with UNSCAP in exploring this green bond market for Bhutan since last uh, few years. SCAP support has helped in introducing the concept of green bond and potential benefits of green bond for financing Bhutan's environment conservation effort to various stakeholders in the country. In order to issue this green bond Bhutan, uh, presently uh, Bhutan is working on the important aspects such as minimum issue amount, sustainable coupon rate on Bhutan's green bond, certification of green bonds, rating of a green bond and rating fee and then underwriter. So these are some of the very technical uh, issues which we are uh, presently grappling with and trying to work towards the green bond guidelines uh, for which uh, we are uh, at an advanced stage. So green bond issues can contribute to us strategic initiatives to achieve this nationally determined contribution targets, uh, address SDGs and mitigate climate change and social inequalities besides uh, achieving the SDGs. So considering uh, the level of awareness uh, and also <clears throat> increasing trend of issuance of green, green bond in the region, Bhutan is very confident that Bhutan can issue uh, green bond in the uh, very near future locally and internationally. And in that, uh, we expect uh, to benefit uh, from this innovative financing mechanism. However, challenges remain, capacity gaps, uh, technicalities, and also uh, being a small country, the size of green bond if we issue internationally, uh, how uh, what would be the ideal size. So these are some of the challenges we are facing. However, we are very confident that Bhutan will be able to firstly, uh, tap the uh, resources that lies within the domestic capital market, and secondly, go international uh, with the technical support uh, extended by UNSCAP. With this, uh, Bhutan is uh, seriously considering the issuance of green bond for uh, financing the environmental needs and also to support a resilient uh, recovery that is green and sustainable. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Durji, for your valuable discussion and outlining the policy on financing for development, especially in Bhutan. We are delighted to have Mr. Herminio Jean Cortes Runas, Senior Officer at the Finance Integration Division, ASEAN Economic Community Department. Mr. Jean Runas, please take the floor. Yes, uh, thank you, Ms. Zainab, and uh, you and Aska for inviting us to this uh, C Policy Dialogue on Sustainable Finance. I would also like to uh, commend Mr. Samudin for his uh, comprehensive presentation on the Green SDG Link Bands in Southeast Asia. May I request Ms. Zainab to upload my uh, presentation, please? Sure. Our next slide, please. Now let me uh, highlight the adverse impact of the uh, COVID-19 to ASEAN's uh, economic integration and development. No? The uh, pandemic has highlighted the need for ASEAN to build back and build back better. ASEAN needs uh, a green and inclusive recovery to uh, particularly meet the urgent needs such as public health, education, and job creation, especially for the most vulnerable sectors. And uh, they also need to build uh, resilience to uh, future disasters. ASEAN also needs to rebuild better and smarter that would require the mobilization of huge amounts of capital from both public and private sources. Next slide, please. 
in the region, the uh, ASEAN finance uh, minister's process has embarked on uh, driving uh, green and sustainable finance in ASEAN. And among these initiatives are as follows. Uh, the roadmap for ASEAN sustainable capital markets uh, under the uh, ASEAN Capital Markets Forum, wherein the ACMF is currently working on these uh, six to short medium term focus areas in the roadmap. The next is the uh, most important one, which is the development of a comprehensive ASEAN sustainability, uh, sustainability link bond standards to facilitate the uh, bond issuance for sustainability related goals and complement this uh, suite of uh, bond standards that ACMF has already introduced for green, social and sustainability bonds. Uh, as the, uh, our previous speaker, uh, Commissioner Amatong said, that since 2017 until the end of 2020, there has been a total of uh, $12.2 billion uh, already uh, labeled as <clears throat> under these uh, ASEAN standards have been issued, excluding the almost $4 billion in uh, green stock now. Uh, the next one is the uh, development of uh, a comprehensive ASEAN sustainable finance uh, taxonomy. Uh, this uh, ASEAN taxonomy uh, uh, will uh, be cross-cutting across uh, the uh, work streams under the ASEAN finance and central bank governors process. No? It includes those that of uh, the capital markets, the banking, uh, the banking sector and insurance. The ASEAN taxonomy will be the overarching guide for uh, all AMS complementing their uh, respective national uh, sustainability initiatives and serving as uh, ASEAN's common language leader. The next one is the uh, alignment of uh, infrastructure finance efforts with uh, sustainability. The promotion of this uh, through the promotion of uh, sustainable finance first for sustainable uh, projects policy and uh, also uh, through leveraging on the ASEAN infrastructure fund to support the uh, capital market issuances by tapping into this uh, ASEAN catalytic uh, green finance uh, facility which uh, utilizes the AAF to raise these uh, projects now. So these are the ongoing initiatives in ASEAN that uh, promotes uh, sustainable finance in, uh, in the region. Next slide, please. Uh, uh, now let me talk about the uh, the Sicilian Comprehensive Recovery Framework, where in the uh, the ASEAN Leaders Summit in uh, in their uh, last uh, summit uh, in 2020 has tasked uh, for the development of a comprehensive recovery framework that is robust, holistic, inclusive, gender responsive, and science based as well as effective in taking the region through the reopening and recovery stages. Now, uh, the ACRF uh, or the ASEAN Comprehensive Recovery Framework articulates uh, the ASEAN's response to the different stages of recovery by focusing on the key sectors and segments of society that are most affected by the pandemic. And this is anchored on uh, five broad strategies. Uh, the first one is on enhancing the health system the second strategy is on strengthening the uh, human security. Uh, broad strategy three uh, <clears throat> is about maximizing the potential of intra-ASEAN market and broader economic integration. Uh, broad strategy four will uh, be on mm -hmm. accelerating this inclusive, uh, inclusive digital transformation. And on broad strategy five is the advancing towards a more sustainable and resilient future. So given the scale and uh, impact of uh, the pandemic, the ASEAN recognizes that uh, addressing the crisis requires coordination, coordinated action, not only within the region, but as well as cooperation with its partners, no? including uh, UNESCO. So uh, the ACRF can be a platform for partnership and collaboration. ASEAN can leverage on the uh, UNESCO's uh, expertise on SDGs in it towards its uh, recovery efforts. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> so uh, on, on this ACRF, uh, the finance track will be uh, contributing to this uh, broad strategy five on advancing towards more sustainable and resilient future with 
uh, initiatives such as the uh, promotion of uh, sustainable finance and the roadmap of ASEAN uh, sustainable capital markets. No? So uh, for this year, the target uh, for 2021 on the finance track are as follows. No? So uh, again, I've already mentioned this. First is the development of this uh, ASEAN taxonomy, which is uh, expected to be promoted at the 26 uh, United Nations uh, Climate Change Conference of the Parties uh, by the end of this year. And uh, the ACMF's, uh, the, or the ASEAN Capital Markets Forum's uh, initiatives on the promotion of uh, these ASEAN Green, Social and Sustainability, sustainability Bond Standards that has targeted of building on the existing suite of uh, ASEAN standards on sustainable financing. And also they will, uh, the ACMF will also further explore the development of uh, ASEAN sustainability, sustainability link bond standards to further facilitate the issuance of sustainability link bonds in ASEAN through its uh, aid to, uh, to <clears throat> its recovery efforts also as well. So uh, these are the uh, ongoing uh, ACRF initiatives under the finance track that would uh, be a platform for ASEAN's partners uh, towards its recovery efforts from COVID-19 pandemic. No? So having said this, I will stop here and we'll back to Ms. Zainab. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. John Runas, for explaining ASEAN finance sector initiatives and the roadmap of promoting sustainable finance to recover from the COVID-19. Now it's my honor to give the floor to Ms. Ifuda Abderazakova, Strategic Partnership and Development Finance Advisor, UN Resident Coordinator Officer in Cambodia, to share the Cambodia experience on Green Bond. Ms. Ifuda Abderazakova, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Zainab. Uh, dear distinguished uh, excellencies, distinguished speakers and colleagues, I have the honor and pleasure to participate in this discussion on uh, how SDG and green bonds um, are being as an innovative financial mechanism in our efforts to support national development plans at the country and transition to climate resilient, um, <clears throat> low carbon and green growth based development. What is being done in Cambodia? If I may share uh, the current state of play, as some colleagues mentioned, the uh, um, Earlier in presentations, the role of Cambodia, the Cambodia is uh, experiencing, um, has ex demonstrated a great success over the recent years with rapid growth rates, uh, outperforming expectations and increasing its human development index by 980 which made the country one of the world's best performers. Unfortunately, the impact of the COVID-19 crisis is being felt largely through key factors uh, that are, that are uh, key driving the economy, the tourism, the experts, and foreign government. It has been heavily reliant on tourists from East Asia and the Pacific region from China constituting 35% uh, arrivals, but this has declined rapidly after the COVID-19 outbreak. You have uh, the pandemic has implications and also the huge uh, financial burden. In the meantime, the government was able to reprioritize much of the public spending and uh, provide uh, social protection measures and cash transfers using existing uh, savings. So even uh, you shown uh, in, in group, uh, Cambodia among the ASEAN countries is far um, on the right from the depth. So it, it's uh, number seven, if, if I remember. So it has things, however, Recently, um, Cambodia also met the LDC graduation status and potentially it will be transitioning out of it by 2030. So this has medium and long term implications given the declining um, <clears throat> official development assistance 
which constitutes 8% of the GDP, and increase demand for growth in domestic revenue generation, which is now 16% of GDP. It is also expected that government um, um, will, not government, but there will be limited access to concessional loans with, with the LDC graduation process, it's, but we have to look into what is the medium and long implications of that. And it's important to acknowledge growing private sector in Cambodia, private sector finance dominance in Cambodia, which is um, requires a different approach, uh, one focused on facilitation and influencing actions over uh, regulations and directions only. In this regard, uh, urgent policy measures are needed in the near term to support the public and private sector financing, specifically leveraging innovative financing mechanism, including the SDG green bonds, as we are discussing today. Let me uh, uh, give you a brief overview of what is the investment climate for SDG green bonds issuance or appetite in Cambodia. Currently, Cambodia's bond market is still in its um, infancy. Uh, it's at the uh, early stages of maturity. There are seven bonds have been listed in Cambodia Stock Exchange. The issuance of government bonds uh, also signals for the deepening of the first capital market and establishment of a risk-free benchmark for pricing locally issued corporate bonds. Despite its early maturity phase, the country has taken uh, important steps to expedite uh, the pathways to green bonds. Some of the early interventions include uh, work with the Association of Banks in Cambodia in 2010, which signed in the memorandum of agreement with the US aid Green Invest Asia to establish national risk management and sustainable finance principles. The initial steps uh, provide the, and signal some of the possibilities for banks in Cambodia to have institutional structures to follow for green financing. At the high level, these principles are generally aligned to those um, included in the green bond standards by the ACMF. Uh, green bonds uh, as, uh, have an essential role in scaling up investments in energy efficiency, renewable energy project, and infrastructure, as mentioned a little bit earlier. There is a huge potential for that. In Cambodia, commercial banks play a key, a huge role. And that's where we see the engagement with private sector around the SDG green bond issuance. At the same time, the borrowing mechanisms for bond structures need to be established, strengthened, including infrastructure, market, and standards. To enable the issuance of sovereign bonds, um, <coughs> sorry, uh, to de develop uh, capital markets in Cambodia, it's important to strengthen monetary policies and uh, in engage um, the greatly uh, private sector market development. There are a few things that uh, has uh, is being done with the UN, and it's an ongoing the way UN is also supporting. Um, <coughs> supporting Cambodia's Securities and Exchange Commission, uh, the, the need for formation of secondary bond and purchase markets in private sector intermediaries, and also expanding the role and capacity of the National Bank of Cambodia, and to, uh, to uh, expand tools uh, available to grow private investments. And let me mention a few um, key activities that the UN, uh, United Nations Cambodia is supporting the Royal Government of Cambodia. Recently, United Nations launched a SDG financing portfolio of two joint programs, one on integrated national financing framework, helping the government to develop a sustainable financing strategy. And then second one is supporting the establishment of a credit guarantee scheme for women entrepreneurs. So we have uh, 
Under this portfolio, uh, some work is being done by UNDP and UNCDF as key uh, government, the as key UN agencies. UNDP is currently working on identifying and conducting a macroeconomic assessment on the appetite and conditions for sovereign bond issuance in Cambodia. That is uh, under the local uh, Khmer real bond issuance. So that type of assessment is going. UNDP is also working on tagging, SDG tagging with the national budgeting. And UNCDF uh, is currently working closely with the Cambodia Securities Exchange on the potential for blended financing options with private sector as part of uh, UNCDF's regional capital markets assessment of Cambodia's uh, debt appetite. So even um, the UNDP recently conducted the development finance assessment explores and identifies the potential on clear climate and uh, green financing and there is the huge uh, importance where uh, for joint collaboration at the sub-regional level. So with this, uh, I, I would like to mention that there is a huge potential and there is a, a capacity uh, needs and uh, there is a Im importance uh, uh, in signifying that how we can make innovation, innovative financing actionable at the country level, particularly in Cambodia. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Ifuta Terazakova, for this valuable insight about the current situation of Cambodia with Green Bond. Uh, to continue, let me now turn to our next speaker, Babek Mohamed Didi Hardiana, Head of Innovative Financing Lab, UNDP Indonesia, to present on the work in Indonesia. Mr. Didi, you have the floor. Yes, uh, thank you so much, uh, Zainab. Uh, please allow me to share my screen first. I hope uh, you can uh, see my screen. Yeah. Can I get uh, indication? Uh, that, yes, uh, my screen uh, is yes, okay. yours clear. Yeah, yes. Yeah, OK, thank you so much once again, uh, uh, Zainab, and also UNS Cup for uh, inviting me to this important event. event. Uh, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, uh, wherever you are. Uh, greetings from Jakarta. Uh, my name is uh, Muhammad Didi Hardiana. I'm the head of uh, Innovative Financing Lab of uh, UNDP Indonesia. Uh, so in this opportunity, I would like to share uh, UNDP's experience in supporting Indonesia in its green and sustainable bond work, and also how UNDP has been supporting uh, in this area as uh, one of the government development partner. So uh, the government of Indonesia has a strong uh, commitment to achieve uh, its NDC and also SDGs uh, by 2030. And despite the many advances uh, by uh, pre-COVID-19 before the pandemic, uh, the government already indicated about 4.7 trillion of funding is required to achieve uh, the SDGs and also the uh, including for uh, funding the climate actions and to address the challenges in financing uh, SDGs and also to recover economy uh, post uh, COVID-19 uh, Indonesia of course needs to increase its investment uh, in uh, SDGs uh, through uh, innovative finance innovative financing which the country is uh, pursuing uh, with the support from uh, UNDP and as the most, uh, the fourth most populous country in the world, and one of the fastest growing emerging markets in, in uh, Indonesia, have a very huge potential for innovative financing, including through a thematic uh, green and sustainable bond. Uh, uh, leveraging the untapped financial resources and innovative financing uh, becoming urgent uh, because of the current situation. Uh, so the government, uh, like a uh, initiated the issuance of the green sukuk uh, since uh, 2018 uh, both at the global and uh, domestic market so the journey of the green sukuk uh, started with the development of green bond uh, and green sukuk framework back in 2017 uh, which was developed uh, based on the green bond uh, principle uh, issued by uh, icma and the framework consists of four pillars uh, which are uh, use of proceed uh, project evaluation and selection, uh, management of proceeds, and also reporting, which I uh, will explain a little bit later. 
Uh, and uh, in the process, the framework was also reviewed and received a second party opinion uh, by uh, Cicero and was uh, awarded a medium uh, green uh, shade. Uh, so uh, if I also can uh, explain that, uh, like I said, since 2018, uh, the government has uh, issued the green sukuk. Uh, up to now, already four global green sukuk issuance as also explained by previous speakers, and uh, it has uh, successfully raised about 3.5 billion US dollar. And through this uh, issuance, uh, the government, the Republic of Indonesia, able to tap into a new type of investors, uh, which is a green investors, uh, which increasingly uh, from which the number or the rate, uh, the percentage is increasing from uh, 32 three percent in the first issuance in 2018 and uh, now the last issuance on uh, uh, on May 2021 20, uh, last month uh, the number of the green investor is uh, 57 uh, percent uh, in addition the government also tried to tap into the domestic market uh, and issued a retail a green sukuk that can be uh, bought by the uh, Indonesian citizen uh, two issuance in 2019 and 2020 has raised about 500 million uh, US dollar, and interestingly, uh, the is the green the retail uh, instrument uh, were majority purchased by millenni millennial uh, generation, uh, uh, signaling uh, signaling the growing appetite uh, of the, this group uh, towards green and sustainable investment, which not only focuses on the returns but also the impact. Uh, of the investment. So uh, let me unpack uh, each of the pillars, uh, which also quite uh, interesting also to uh, share with the participants. So for the first pillar on the use pro of proceeds, uh, Indonesia has determined the nine eligible sectors uh, that can be financed uh, by the proceeds. Uh, you can see on the uh, left, uh, low, uh, left below uh, corner. Uh, and from the nine eligible sectors uh, so far, the Green Sukuk issuance has financed uh, about five sectors for climate change and mitigation adaptation, including renewable energy, energy efficiency, uh, sustainable transport, waste uh, management, and also uh, climate adaptation. Uh, and then second on the and on the second pillar, uh, this is one of the crucial component, especially for a sovereign issuer in uh, identifying and also selecting the green projects. So for Indonesia, the Ministry of Finance is utilizing a system called climate budget tagging. I think a uh, speaker from Bhutan also mentioned that they are uh, working on SDG uh, tagging, uh, which was also implemented since uh, 2016 and, and helping the government to track and monitor their spending and also activities on climate change mitigation and adaptation. And uh, most of the government ministries ag agencies in Indonesia have uh, regularly uh, tagged their outputs uh, related to the climate action uh, uh, every year. On the third pillar, uh, the Ministry of Finance committed to allocate 100% uh, of the proceeds received to uh, refinance and also finance a green project and also ensure uh, its accountability. Uh, while on the fourth pillar uh, related to the reporting, uh, the Indonesia's Green Sukuk is audited every year and the report also published to the investor and to the public. From the issuance since 2018 to 2020, the Green Sukuk projected uh, uh, to contribute to about 10.3 million tons of uh, greenhouse gas emission reduction or CO2 uh, and also uh, contribute to the other uh, factors such as uh, building about six, six, 700 kilometers of a railway track, uh, increasing the electricity capacity about 7.3 million, and improve the solid waste management uh, for more than 5 million households, which showing a uh, positive contribution to the SDGs. So, in regards of how UNDP is supporting the thematic bond issuance, uh, maybe I will also start that since the adoption of the SDGs by the global communities in 2015, uh, the issue of financing gap has been raised by many studies, uh, which uh, of course becoming more crucial at this situation, current situation due to the pandemic. 
And for UNDP, we have been developing uh, our service offer to support uh, government partners and also trying to engage private sectors uh, to mobilize uh, public and private capital towards attainment of SDGs, one of which uh, through the innovative debt instrument. Uh, as uh, you can see here, uh, our, uh, the UNDP uh, reflecting from our support to the Ministry of Finance of Indonesia, we are uh, providing about three type of support, uh, technical assistance, institutional training and capacity building, and also a campaign uh, and advocacy. Uh, and if you can see the like the steps of uh, the bond issuance here, uh, starting from uh, engaging stakeholders, uh, establishing thematic bond framework, identify the eligible budget items and projects, arrange an independent external review, issue thematic bond, and then monitor and reporting. Uh, we have been supporting on most of these steps, uh, except for the underwriting on the issuance of the pragmatic bond, uh, because uh, UNDP is not mandated to uh, manage fund, so we don't have the uh, capacity to work on this, but we work on the pre- and uh, post-issuance of the bond. So uh, to date, uh, UNDP has been supporting uh, countries and also financial institutions uh, such as in Indonesia for the world first sovereign green sukuk back in 2018, uh, 2020 when Mexico issued the world first sovereign green, uh, SDG bond. And recently in China, we are working with a new development bank to issue a SDG link bond. And uh, just recently, uh, UNDP uh, also has just published a SDG impact standard for bond uh, that aims And this through the hello hello can you hear me yes your voice is so clear yeah please continue. okay yeah sorry there was a connection uh, issue yeah so like I just said so just recently uh, we published the SDG impact standard for bond and this provide some kind of roadmap and practical guideline. Uh, to translate the intention of the issuer to contribute to the SDGs. All types of issuers such as corporate or sovereign uh, can of course use this standard uh, and in this sense it is suitable for the green social or sustainable bond uh, to be used for a pandemic uh, response that may be proposed by the issuer. So there are four of four benefits of the SDG impact standard for bond. The first one is it can be a guide to map out their internal impact uh, measurement and management practices. Uh, and the issuer can also use the standard before if they are intent to apply for a certification, for example, by CBI. Uh, and then also to review a strength and possible gap in SDG bond program uh, adherence to the standard. And the last one, uh, the standard can be used to note any implication of for rectification and marketing of an NSDG program uh, and SDG claim. Uh, okay, uh, this is the last slide. So just maybe sharing several lessons learned from our uh, experience uh, in the thematic bond. So for the pre issuance there are three uh, main uh, concerns. The first one is uh, about the framework development. It is important to ensure the framework is aligned with the government plan and project with uh, national priorities. Also responding to the, uh, uh, the current medium or long term needs. Uh, it is also necessary to have the second opinion to ensure uh, compliance with a green principle or also Sharia principle. Uh, and on the project selection, like I mentioned, uh, for it is also uh, good to have some kind of robust site, uh, system, a robust system, a robust system to identify and uh, select eligible green project, such as uh, budget tagging, uh, either for uh, climate, social, or uh, sustainable. While for the post issuance, uh, it is also interest, uh, important to build a strong coordination with the stakeholders 
in particular if you are issuing a sovereign uh, a thematic bond uh, like, like which will need the coordination between uh, uh, across ministries uh, which can be solved by establishing some kind of a task force or working group as well as uh, developing a clear and agreed, uh, agreed work plan uh, and then right also in for the post issue uh, it will uh, be important and also necessary to utilize uh, the support uh, either from UNDP or maybe from other uh, institution uh, such as maybe the development banks ADB World Bank who also have the capacity and program to support uh, the issuer easily uh, as well as from uh, UNDP side uh, we are also uh, able to support the uh, issuance process uh, for pre and post and leveraging our technical expertise for uh, for both and global and uh, regional network. And last thing from my side, I think for uh, UNDP in Indonesia, we are uh, we are uh, we are going to uh, work together with uh, different uh, development banks and partners uh, to continue and leverage and scale up innovative financing instrument. Uh, for example, uh, currently we are also supporting the government in preparation for. Uh, SDG bond. Uh, there is also a possibility for issuing blue uh, sukuk, uh, and then we also see other kind of financing instruments such as SDG sling loan, uh, blended finance, impact fund, which may be complementing what uh, our my colleague in uh, Cambodia that this will be also be uh, supported by the joint program with uh, several UN organizations such as uh, UNICEF, uh, UNIDO, and also UN Environment. Uh, and of course, last very last thing, last word from my side. Uh, we are looking forward to collaborate uh, with UNS Cup under the new initiative. Uh, as currently, we are also have been partnering with several uh, partners and development bank, including World Bank, uh, Asian Development Bank, and CBI, uh, in uh, promoting uh, sustainable and green bonds in domestic market by working together with uh, several uh, domestic stakeholders such as the stock exchange the financial service authority and also with the uh, the banks i think i will uh, stop here and hand over the screen to zainab thank you Thank you, Mr. Didi, for your overview about the Indonesian experience of green sukuk and the steps of issuing and how we can learn it from this good experience. Now, now we are moving to the interactive discussion to address some of the pre-collected questions from our online participants through the registration form to our speakers. So we will have some opportunity for further observations. Then we highly encourage to invite participants to write their questions through the chat box and we will address them to the speakers. Let me address the first question to Mr. Durji. In the context of Bhutan experience, which approach could be used to attract foreign investors, for example, EU investors, when issuing green bond in the domestic market? Should the country undertake reform or ensure compliance to encourage investors before issuing new international bond? Mr. Durji, you have the floor. Mr. Durji, please take the floor. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you for this very important question. For Bhutan, it has always been uh, exciting uh, in terms of uh, choosing the right instruments to mobilize financing for our development needs. Uh, with the pandemic, and also requiring to meet this increase in financing need, various instruments uh, are being uh, used. As reported in my intervention, we have already started using conventional uh, sovereign bonds, now followed by green bonds. Uh, when we look into the various opportunities for Bhutan, we see 
plenty of uh, opportunities. Firstly, considering that Bhutan is committed to remain carbon neutral for all times to come and presently being carbon negative. Secondly, the excellent environmental track record and also the uh, intact uh, biodiversity that we have maintained. Uh, the issuance of green bond uh, appears to be uh, one of the uh, forward-looking instruments that Bhutan can uh, issue in the market. Can we, uh, locally, uh, our experience shows that there is overwhelming response, so therefore we see that, but then local capacity will become limited as we move forward. Can we attract foreign investors uh, uh, to subscribe to green bonds issued by Bhutan? When we look into the various markets, I think in the emerging markets, uh, as, as it contributes to 40% of the green bond market, we see lots of opportunities, firstly. Then secondly, when, when we look into Europe and the US, uh, we see those markets are also already familiar with green bonds. And indeed, there is high level of awareness uh, in the EU and also in, in other markets. So therefore, if Bhutan issues uh, a green bond market, green bond, we see lots of opportunities to attract uh, foreign investors, firstly. And secondly, within the country, we also have lots of incentives uh, to attract foreign investors. Uh, so therefore, uh, considering the environmental track record and our commitment to maintain carbon negative, carbon neutral for all times to come, and then the uh, various uh, policies and incentives that is available, we are very confident we should be able to attract foreign investors. The only challenge uh, uh, that will be uh, associated with green bonds issuance from Bhutan will be the size uh, of the green bond. If will it be uh, large enough to attract uh, big time investors in Bhutan? So that's something we are contemplating with. So thank you very much for this very important question. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dorji, for sharing your insights. This is very uh, valuable for us. Let me address uh, the following question to Ms. Ifuda. As some ASEAN member states have no green and STG linked bond, what need to be brought to their attention to issue green STG linked bond at the national and regional or the regional level? More precisely, what are the key challenges for less developing countries, especially uh, Cambodia, to issue green bond and how can the United Nations help to facilitate or support this activity? Ms. Ifuda, please take the floor. Thank you so much uh, for asking this question. I think uh, one of the challenges uh, <clears throat> in strengthening capital market is, is creating that market. And I think the role of the ASEAN Secretariat, uh, as it was this, uh, mentioned by distinguished uh, our speakers today, is adding that uh, tools, standards, policy frameworks uh, based on the good practices from the sub-regional, uh, regional level to bring uh, common uh, taxonomy, the language uh, and common understanding uh, for uh, green bonds. And, and earlier, as it was mentioned by um, Mr. Uh, Nabit uh, Hanif, uh, the greenwashing, right? If we have a common uh, <clears throat> understanding of the green bonds, then the green taxonomies, then it will be helpful to establish uh, such mechanisms. And also, maybe in the context, um, it would be useful to have that engagement of international credit rating agencies to support the issue of uh, government general obligation or project bonds. In the case of uh, Cambodia, it is it's very important to uh, test the appetite for the local market. And as we as we have seen today, the Bhutan's experiencing is remarkable that it has outperformed expectations, uh, huge uh, <clears throat> subscription and in other cases. So it proves as a potential innovative tool, the innovative mechanism, the SDG and green bond. So in, in that regard, uh, maybe helping with uh, some member states regulations that make uh, transboundary financial instruments um, when the government and green bonds are more accessible uh, without uh, transaction, huge transaction costs and tax costs and leveraging the uh, looking for leveraging 
in the international investors. I think these are the, some of the areas that would be useful uh, in terms of uh, the ASEAN, uh, in the context of ASEAN engagement, in, in particularly uh, Cambodia. Thank you, Ms. Ifuda, for sharing your idea and suggestion. Let me now turn to the following question to Mr. Jun Runas. What potential initiative can ASEAN explore with the United Nations at the regional and national level to promote SDG linked bond? Mr. Jun Runas, please take the floor. Yes, uh, thank you, Zainab, and uh, thank you for the question. Uh, again, as I said earlier, that uh, there is this uh, potential cooperation among partners uh, in ASEAN is the uh, this uh, ACRF uh, thing. No? Uh, as I said earlier, the uh, ASEAN cannot manage to do this uh, ACRF on its own, but it would look into its partners, uh, including, of course, UNESCO uh, and other uh, partners to uh, collaborate and uh, come up with uh, uh, some sort of arrangement in moving forward this SDG bonds. Now, ASEAN can hopefully uh, leverage on uh, the UN's expertise uh, with regards to SDGs. No? Uh, so these are the uh, one of the uh, initiatives of, that we could uh, that uh, that uh, UN and other partners can come in and help ASEAN on uh, their uh, ACRF uh, initiative. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Junonas, for your idea and your views. Uh, now I would like to continue with the next question addressed to Mr. Didi, Mohamed Didi. What is the required for green, social, and sustainable bond to further align the proceed to the SDG linked bond? More precisely, what is the necessary to report to um, uh, of the impact SDG bond in practical way and transparently? Mr. Didi, the floor is yours. Yeah, uh, Zainab, can you repeat the first question? What is the required for the green social sustainability bond to align the proceeds to SDG linked bond? Yeah, okay. Uh, thank you for the uh, question, uh, Zainab. I think uh, it's a uh, quite uh, yeah tricky. Yeah, we mean, but uh, it's a uh, doable for aligning uh, green social and sustainability uh, with the SDG link bond. And I think uh, what uh, necessary for the uh, issuer, the potential issuer to consider is of course uh, referring to the standard that's already uh, available uh, in the uh, in the global or regional. So for example, the, the ICMA, the Asian uh, green bond standard and so on. I think uh, if they are uh, looking at that standard, it will be uh, becoming the like the reference, the good reference. And then the second is, of course, like I mentioned in my presentation, uh, like uh, looking also at the national uh, priorities that available in the country. Uh, most of the country maybe already have the developed their uh, nationally determined contribution or the SDGs uh, roadmap. So it will be. Uh, uh, better to see the indicator of those uh, national document and then uh, for the issuer also to refer to that. I think that's uh, uh, that's my answer. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Didi, uh, for your insights. Let me now to move to Mr. Zanatan Hussein uh, We have uh, we have right now the COVID has both financial cost to the entire world. It has promoted massive fiscal monetary responses from across the world to provide relief and support for sustainable economic activity during this difficult time. Besides uh, the discussion of panelists, what other policies needed to be implemented to ensure sustainable finance to help the country from COVID-19? Mr. Zanatan, Zanatan, please take the floor. And, uh, thank, thank you, Zainab. Thank you, Zena, for, for your question. Uh, there's, there's a lot of uh, thing. I, I, I think my uh, in my presentation is quite counterintuitive because uh, the COVID make uh, higher government debt and, and, and wider uh, fiscal balance. 
but the the one of the offer is actually one of the kind of like innovative uh, solution is uh, issuing a, a green SDG link bond, which is actually this is a debt instrument. Uh, and in some point, you can uh, make if it's not managed correctly, then it could uh, increase the the, the risk. But then again, uh, if if we learn again uh, and look again on on this uh, guideline to issue the the green SDG link bond, and also from from the uh, ICMA or the ASEAN Capital Market Forum, it it designed to kind of like help uh, and and guarding uh, the, the the issuance itself. So. Uh, to, 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 to kind of like have the ability to, to, to issue this kind of bond, uh, I think it's mentioned earlier uh, uh, from the other speakers, uh, it's, it's requires some kind of like coordination and infrastructure. So it's not just about issuing the bond itself, but uh, the capacity, the coordination in, in the country. Uh, and, and normally I, I see across the Asia Pacific when, uh, when the government already issued the, 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 and, and, and have um, adequate some capacity, it will trickle to, to, uh, to the private sector or corporate so they know they adapt what the government uh, is doing. So uh, in, in this in, in this poll, uh, it's, it's really I mean, uh, the COVID is challenging and require a lot of uh, financing to not only uh, get recover better, but also there's a climate uh, change uh, issue and also health, uh, but then uh, using, using this uh, very specific uh, instrument like the SDG link bond or green bond or social bond or uh, sustainable bond, it's really helpful on uh, targeting a very specific and you are not derailed from uh, what you need in an active SDG and also recover uh, better from the COVID. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Zanatan, uh, for your insight. Any other remark? Any other any other question? As I see, I see none. We will now move into the next uh, uh, the closing session. Thank you to all the ten coach speakers and participants for taking part in this session of the Southeast Asia Policy Dialogue. I return the floor to Mr. Alberto to give some closing remark. Thank you all. Thank you very much, Zainab. I would like to also thank you all the participants and speakers for very interesting uh, presentations and discussion. I think that I personally learned a lot and very interesting uh, material. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to remark just a few points. You know, one is uh, the, I, I really commend ASEAN for the initiative to, to create this um, a taxonomy. I mean, this is very important because uh, there is always this uh, doubt, you know, in, in the markets about what exactly is green, you know, the problem of greenwashing. And uh, I think ASEAN is really taking a very important initiative following the European Union, who is also developing a taxonomy. I think that um, this issue is really, uh, we can, can be considered a public good if ASEAN develops a, a good taxonomy because uh, it is an enormous investment, it's a complicated and difficult process. And I think that probably is something that can serve countries outside ASEAN. It can become um, a, a public good for other countries in the region. Um, so I think this is something to, to consider. I also, I think that an important issue that, that was discussed is the the graduate or the transition you know between uh, countries that are starting to issue bonds for the first time like in the case of Bhutan or Cambodia who is considering this and countries who are already experienced in uh, participating in bond markets so i think that this is also very important to keep this uh, idea in mind and uh, i personally very much like the idea of developing uh, do local or do local currency bond markets as an initial step. I've been engaging, you know, another work in discussions about the credit rating agencies, and uh, the issue is that you know they tend to be uh, they don't know much about the frontier markets. They are kind of reluctant, you know, to to rate these countries. And um, a, a solution, you know, until uh, these countries become more uh, more advanced, is to to work with the domestic uh, capital markets and start to develop the institutions, uh, the institutional capabilities as well, to to develop uh, this type of uh, of products. 
Um, and then, of course, after that, it's a is good idea to also to tap the, the external market. I'm not going to anticipate this is the topic of the ne next uh, session, and uh, my colleague uh, Ron is going to discuss a little more uh, before closing. So uh, I think those two are, are seen as quite you know, uh, important uh, takeaways from my part. And uh, I would like to, well, to reiterate uh, participants that uh, we would like to, Eska would like to continue engaging in this topic. And we have these two events coming up, the SDG Forum for ASEAN on 28 uh, September. And then the committee meeting is going to happen in the second week of October. So pretty much uh, back to back. So I would like to encourage participants to, to join us. We are also planning uh, a side event to the committee, and uh, this is a very important topic. I think that is um, very likely we will discuss these issues uh, even more, uh, but in a more uh, broader and regional context uh, at the time of the, our committee. So again, thank you very much from my part. I really appreciate your presentations and, and discussions. And now we'd like to pass it to Ronnie for his introduction to the next session. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Alberto. So we have concluded uh, session one on the uh, updates and particularly the, the, the potential of uh, such bonds in Southeast Asia. Uh, we will have a further discussion on not only the potential, but also the high interest that such bonds will have on investors outside of the region. So session two, which will take place uh, Thursday, the 24th of June, uh, we will talk about the roadmap on how this potential can be realized if there was a scheme that will allow countries in Southeast Asia to promote not only its potential, but also the structure of how, uh, you know, the SDG infrastructure should be, should be formulated, what are some of the regulations that need to be kept in mind. But mind you, when we talk about the potential uh, of such uh, a region, it is also important to keep in view of the international investors. And here in session two, uh, we will have uh, invited a number of speakers from the perspective of the EU investors. So hopefully that will try to match the potential of Southeast Asia with the investors from the European Union in specific. Uh, so with that, I would like to invite everyone who joined uh, today's session to our next session uh, held uh, in, in, in two days' time, and to also uh, keep in mind that uh, any potential bonds must have the interests of investors uh, in, in mind. So, so with that, I would like to uh, again invite everyone uh, to the uh, session two that will be held on Thursday. But before we, uh, we end, I would also like to uh, invite everyone to fill in the a survey questionnaire that is uh, located in the chat box. Uh, we, we hope to get your your views on, on, on how, or at least the feedback on how we performed in session one. Uh, so with that, uh, I would like to, to close uh, not only the session, but also the program for today. And I look forward to everyone uh, on Thursday. Thank you very much and have a good afternoon.